And what did she make of it? Do you know what? It's left me even more undecided than oh, I was before. No. Oh, no. Because I thought Rishi Sunak just seemed defeated. Yes. Um, and Keir Starmer didn't answer any questions. Mm. Um, he just didn't seem to have any... He just he rolled out what his, message, what his messaging was, but just ignored the questions. And so I was just left really unimpressed with both of them mm. last night. I couldn't... I just think if, if, you, if you watch these sort of things, to think, right, I need to make up my mind who's going to perform best. And there'll be lots of people in that position. Yeah, and I just thought that neither of them did very well. They, did, they both did very badly in different ways, mm. which I just thought was such a disappointment. Yeah, I mean, to me, Rishi Sunak looked like a defeated man. Yeah. He, I thought he looked a bit teary at the start when Beth Rigby was asking him questions about D-Day and the commemorations and, you know, he admitted that he'd let people down. And he, uh, to me, it looked like he was going to cry. He, it has been a very tough few weeks for him. And as the Keir Starmer, as you say, just very long, rambling answers. And then the question from the audience member who said, you know, I just think you're a political robot. Mm. Then he answered with a very long-winded question about his life of service, which I'm not sure is what you want to hear. I think he might be better just to own the fact that he isn't a laugher and a joker and just say, look, that's not my role here. My role is to yeah, take yeah, charge yeah. of the country and be very serious and get the job done and I'm not here to be a comedian. I mean, also, I mean, it, it, is, a, it is unfair to just to push and push him on things like, well, will council tax rate be raised at all mm. over the next five years? You know, what, what's going on? And he quite rightly said, you know, something, you know, fuel duty, you know, is that going to be raised at all over the next five years? Well, of course you can't answer that. Of mm. course you can't answer that. It'd be, it's unrealistic. Um, but he, he, he could have answered it better and just made it clearer. And I don't know, it was just a mess, I thought. You weren't That's impressed? Like, not impressed at all. Let's speak now to the deputy editor for Spiked Online, Fraser Myers. Morning to you, Good Fraser. Morning. Lots to get through. What did you make of the performances last night from both Rishi Sunak and Sir Kirsten? I, I thought it was quite painful for oh. both of them, actually. I mean, I know the YouGov snap poll suggested that Starmer was way ahead of, of Rishi Sunak. I mean, mm. you can see why if you had to choose between the two. But I imagine a lot of people will be thinking none of the above. Yeah. I mean, it was probably the first time of this campaign that Starmer was really taken to task on his kind of flip-flop. Mm. Sort of slippery Starmer, the man who backed Corbyn, not just personally, you know, called oh, him that, a friend. That was that was very odd, actually, mm. wasn't it? Because um, he said, well, he was asked because he'd said Corbyn would make a good prime minister before the last election, and his response to that was, well, I didn't think we were going to win. Yeah, which was really hard. It, he, he said, "Yeah, that was sort of his his get out." That I thought it it was fine because we wouldn't win, so it didn't matter, you know, if I put my name to those policies. But then, even after he lost, he said that he wanted to carry on all the same policies uh, when he was pitching to the Labour members to become mm. Labour leader, only to quite unceremoniously dump that entire platform. Uh, you know. Uh, the other thing I suppose you could think is like, what was the difference between 2017 and 2019 in terms of Labour's policy offer? That was the Brexit second referendum. That was probably the single biggest disaster for the Labour Party. And Keir Starmer was the architect of that. Uh, so if he was so certain they would lose on that policy offer, why did he, why did he make it? Mm. Mm. What did you make of the personality questions when that member of the audience said that he looked like a political robot and then he <laughs> gave that long-winded answer about his career of service. Yes, and you know, the, the member of the audience also said he um, answers questions like a solicitor, i.e. doesn't answer the questions. Uh, you kept getting the sense that Starmer just wanted to drag it back to the message, whether, yeah. how, no matter how unrelated the message was. I mean, we just saw that clip of him saying, you know, dragging it back to my father was a toolmaker. And clearly, you know, audiences have had enough of that. They've heard the line so many times. You know, not to say that it isn't genuine. It's, it's, it's true, of course. Um, it's, we like it when politicians talk about their background. But you want to almost learn something new about him. You want to, you know, feel a sense that you're... Um, you want to feel that you're, you're getting the real picture of him rather than hearing a sort of focus group message. Yeah, we, and we just didn't get any of that last night, did we? I mean, it's things like on 
I mean, there were, there were the, the tax questions, which in a sense I sort of think are a bit unrealistic. Mm. However, he still wouldn't give a straight answer, that's would he? Thing. I mean, that's, that's the problem. No was, straight answer. It was the sort of weasel words of, uh, we have no plans, which means, you know, anything is possible. But you could mm. always say, you know, look, we really don't want to do this, um, but circumstances could change. I mean, if you look at just the last five years, what has happened, you know, we've had the coronavirus pandemic, the energy crisis, um, we've left the EU, you know, all kinds of things that have happened, many of them, you know, completely uh, unprecedented and something that no government could be prepared for. Y you could expect similar things to happen in the next five years. You could say, you know, barring an emergency, we don't want to do this. But mm. he, he just... I think the sense is that he, he's just being vague and evasive, unfortunately. Yeah. And what did you make of Rishi Sunak's performance last night? Rishi Sunak was um, pretty tetchy. He, he often gets tetchy when he's under pressure. I think that it was unfortunate that, you know, he was reminded about the D-Day incident. It's just not going anywhere for him. I think that it's, that was probably one of the biggest misjudgments that any politician has made during an election campaign. Mm -hmm. I mean, who doesn't know or who wouldn't know how important that anniversary is to people and wouldn't understand why it would upset people in the way that it did. Do you, th you think, you know, what's he going to do next? Is he going to punch an NHS nurse or something? So you have, a, what you know, I, you have what no I, sense of where the public are. What I don't... Un well, maybe it is because of the whole D-Day thing, but when this whole election campaign started, mm. everyone was saying, wow, look at, look at Sunak. Yeah. He's bouncing about, mm. he's full of enthusiasm, he's going up visiting factories and it's all this, you know, he's really giving it all that. And he just seemed last night utterly defeated. Yes. I think, well, I think actually the sort of energy that he has, you know, sort of, he, he described himself as buzzing the other day. Mm. I think he just mistakes, you know, hyperactivity or doing things for, you know, winning people over. I mean, he left D-Day to be at that interview. He probably, in his sort of spreadsheet mind, thinks, if I tick off that interview, that's a few more, you know, that's mm. a few more people seeing my policies. He has this long list of policies, you know, um, you know national service and... And, and various other things that are supposed to be eye-catching, they're supposed to win us over. It's as if he thinks, you know, quality over, over quantity. We know they don't add up to a coherent programme for government. Most people don't think any of them will be delivered. But I guess, yes, he just sees them as, um, well, I've got this, uh, you must like that. It's mm. polled well. Why don't you like it? Yeah. What's wrong with you? Yeah. Yeah, where's it? it? Bit of a washout. Yes. Not you, Fraser. <laughs> but the, uh, the, <laughs> the whole thing last night, I think. Uh